We're going to solve this simple problem here, which it consists of a beam with a complicated distributed load. Now the question asks us to calculate the forces FA and FB, which are applied here at A and B, required to keep this beam in static equilibrium. Now earlier we looked at how we would actually calculate or deal with distributed loads and what we would normally do is take that distributed load and replace it with a resultant force which we'll call R which will have a location X bar that will be statically equivalent to the distributed load and we did this using the equation R is equal to the integral over the length of the beam of the distributed load as a function of x dx where x would be the distance along the beam and then we would find the location x bar as the integral over the length of x times the distributed load as a function of x dx divided by the total resultant load which is the integral over the length of w of x dx. Now we have a slight problem in this, uh, with this problem that our distributed load is actually a discontinuous function. So formulating this expression of w of x is a little bit of a pain. However, there is actually an easier way to deal with this problem and that is by just dividing it up into sub areas that we know the solution. So let's take a look at that. If we take a look at our loading here, what we would actually like to do is come up with a resultant force for that distributed load. But instead of coming up with one resultant force, what I'm going to do is take that distributed load and divide it up into smaller known areas that we can deal with. So the first area I will define is a triangle, which I'll denote with a Roman numeral 1. And that area will have a resultant force happening at a particular uh, x uh, bar position. I can then define a second area and it will have its own resultant end position and then a third area and a fourth area. So what we can do is use the known solutions for the resultant and the position of the resultant for a rectangular and a triangular, triangular area in order to set up this problem. So if I look first at area one, what we need to do is consider this triangular area and also consider the points at which it's acting. So not so much the fact that W is six there, but just the height uh, w is 6 here, but we want to deal with the height of this triangle, which is 2. Okay, so that's why we have this 2 here, and it starts from x equals 0 to x equals 4. Now we know that the resultant force is going to occur, we derived it earlier in the class, that this is 1 third the base which I'll call A, so if I call the base of that triangle A, it's one-third from the, the uh, side of the triangle. Or we could also say it's two-thirds from this point. So if we use that result, we can see in our case that A would be four minus zero, and we will get that X bar one is two-thirds times four, which is eight over three meters. Now we also know that the resultant is the area of this triangle, which will just be one-half the base times the height, which will give us one-half the, uh, the height, which is two, times the base, which is four, which gives us four kilonewtons. Now if we move on to area two, it is also a triangle, but now the height of our triangle is four, and it starts at x equals 4 and goes to x equals 10. So when we define x1, we have to take the base here, which is 10 minus 4, which is 6, 
and we are one third of six from that edge, but that edge starts at four. So we get that x bar two is four plus one third six, which is six meters. Now for the resultant, we get one half the base times the height, so one half six times four, okay? Which will give us 12 kilonewtons. Moving on to the third area, we now have our rectangle here has a height of four and a base of four. So this is four and this is four. And it starts at x equals zero. So our resultant force will be in the middle of this rectangle, which will be one half of four. So we get that x bar three is two meters. And the reaction force itself is going to be the base times the height. So four times four, which gives us 16 kilonewtons. And going just a little bit more quickly for area two, uh, sorry, for area four, there's a typo on here. Let's correct that. Um, we now have starting at x equals four to x equals 10. So our base is six and our height is two. So we get that our x bar is four plus one half the base, which is seven meters. And our resultant is just the base times the height, which is 12 kilonewtons. So now we have the magnitudes and positions for all of this here, and we can translate that onto our free body diagram and perform our equilibrium. So the first part of our equilibrium, we will do some of the forces in the Y, taking upwards as our positive reference. Now if we see that, we see that FA and FB are acting upwards, while all of the resultant forces are acting downwards. So we'll get FA plus FB is equal or minus 16 minus 4 minus 12 minus 12 is equal to 0. And if we rearrange that, we will get that FA is equal to 44 minus FB. Okay, and just as a reminder, that value is in kilonewtons. All of our forces we have been uh, calculating are in kilonewtons. Now we can do some of the moments and I will pick point A as my reference point. And if I do that, the force at A uh, passes through that point so it has no moment arm. Where the force at B has, uh, will create, uh, has a moment arm of 4 plus 6. And when I cross that with FB, I'm going to get a counterclockwise moment. So I will get FB times 10. Uh, and that is positive because I've used counterclockwise as my positive reference. Now, all of the other forces are acting downwards and will create a clockwise moment, so it will be negative. So first we get 16 times the moment arm of 2, minus 4 times its moment arm of 8 over 3, minus 12 times 6, and then minus 12 times 7. Simplifying that, I will get that FB is 198.6 repeating, uh, and then I divide that by 10 because it was FB times 10. Uh, I can take that result, which is in kilonewtons again, and, uh, and complete it and simplify it and stay with close to uh, reasonable significant digits, and I get 19.9 kilonewtons. Now, if I sub this value, back into the equation for force equilibrium, I can solve that FA has to be 24.1 kilonewtons. So this becomes our result uh, that we calculate for this problem. Now, I always recommend when you've calculated the results, ask yourself, do these results make any sense? Usually you can analyze the results a little bit and see if they sort of came out as expected. So here, um, we can see that FA is larger than FB. So does that make sense? Well, if we look at our original diagram and the loading, the loading is much more concentrated. If I kind of draw a line down the middle, 
the loading is concentrated on the left hand side more so than on the right. So we would expect the force at A to be larger. So yes, this answer makes sense. Okay, I hope that uh, solution helps you understand this problem a little bit better. Thanks.